say that. It's good to hear that you're also. Well, thanks about about the only time I call my dad and my brother too. And I thank the Lord I can. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for it. Thank the Lord for him. And I know he's got a message that he's prepared and prayed over. I know he needs y'all's prayers. Oh, everybody always gets up here. I hear nobody say they don't need nobody's prayers. I just like y'all to pray for one of his prayers. It is good to be here tonight. Yes, it is. And it's good to sing the songs of Zion, you know. Amen. Steve said that there are many places that don't have people to sing special singing. That's right. There are many places that don't have anybody to play the piano. That's right. There are many places that don't have more than four or five in the whole building. It's true, too. And it's sad. Yes. It really is. And that's why it's so important that we be rooted and grounded Amen. in the truth. That's why it's so important that we know the scriptures. That is why it's so important we teach our children. Amen. And that is why it's so important that we let our light shine. Amen. Amen. We must let our light shine. Amen. If we want it to continue, it must appeal to us. It must appeal to others. That's right. And what is it about the gospel? It does not appeal to people. It shouldn't be anything. But I'm going to tell you what it is. It's Satan. He appeals more. And that's really what it is. There's nothing about the gospel that's unappealing. Everybody wants it. Everybody wants salvation. Everybody wants to live eternally. They want to live with Christ. So there's nothing about the gospel in itself that people don't want. But they don't want to give up sin. That's right. And that, they, they don't want to pay the price for this. That's exactly right. That's true. And we must show them that the price is worth paying. Amen. It is well worth paying. Amen. It was well. There's no one here tonight that would say the price is not worth paying. Amen. Regardless of how hard the road has been, how steep the climb has been. How slippery the slopes, you can do it, pay the price again. Because without Christ, you got the same thing. That's right. You got the hard road, you got the steep slopes, but you've got no one to hold your hand. No That's one right. to steady your footsteps. Amen. No one to help you along. No one to carry you when the road gets rough. It's good to be here tonight. Amen. I trust that the thoughts I have will be a blessing to you. Uh, as I thought and meditated on it, I'm doing a lot of meditating this week and, and have been. Uh, uh, it just seems like it, it helps the day to go by. You know, I meditate on the scriptures and consider and think about things. And, uh, and it's really helpful, you know, when Satan comes up against you, Amen. it's good Amen. to, to Amen. fight him in the scripture. Let's bow our head. Our Heavenly Father, we yes. thank you, Lord, for. Your blessings on our service, Lord. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for your love to us, Lord. Yes. You would come and meet with us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you sent your Son to die in our place, Lord. That we could live, that we could have eternal life, Lord. And that we could show others this marvelous way. I ask, Father, that you bless these thoughts that I have. Use them, Lord, to edify, Lord, the body of Christ. Father, we ask that you have your way. And Lord will give you all the thanks, the honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, our, our theme for convention uh, was Acts 20, and it started at 28 and went down to 31. And I'm going to use some of the same thoughts of this tonight. Uh, it's, uh, I'll start, I'll read there at Acts uh, 20, 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock. Over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch and remember. Now then I'm going to go over to Mark chapter 13 
And, you know, Paul had a great burden there in Acts. He's talking to the elders there. Because he could see things happen. He could see that what Jesus had prophesied was, had already started coming to pass. Right. And he could see down the road. I believe the Lord gave him a special impartment there. But, you know, Jesus said right here in chapter 13, verse 5, He says, And Jesus answered them again, uh, and after them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. Amen. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Amen. Right. You know, uh, we read at many places in the Scriptures where the Bible, Paul tells in Timothy, he tells him to study to show thyself approved. Amen. Amen. You know, and we, we see here Paul reiterating the words that Christ has spoken. Right. And you know, I was thinking about that. You know, that shows that Paul studied right. the writings. Amen. That, that Paul understood what Jesus was talking about. Amen. He understood it. And, and uh, whenever here in the first part of Acts, he's talking about the, uh, the disciples of Jesus. They said, hey, now wait. A There's been these other disciples that sprung up and... And they followed him for a while, but then it was dispersed. There was nothing to it. That's right. and, and then there was another group that come up. Right? And they followed him for a while, then they all dispersed. And he said, now if this thing is like one of those, if it's false, then it'll do away with it. But if it's of God, you can't stop it. And we see that it's of God. It could not be stopped. But we see here that the need for knowing the Scripture, for studying the Scripture, uh, we must study to show ourselves approved Amen. unto God. We, we need to know those that work among us and around us. Right. Amen. Just, just here uh, at convention, we heard of uh, someone that had been causing some trouble in a congregation. Someone that had left and started going here and there and, and preaching this place and that place. That's not of God. Amen. Amen. You know, and they... All they sought to do, and then what has already happened is they start drawing away people to themselves. That's right. We must be aware of this. And how yeah, we, yes. we got to read the scriptures and study. Amen. Yeah. You know, uh, Man. to show you how much that Paul studied the scriptures and read it, you know that Paul references different ones in the Bible. He he references some of Luke's writings, and he references some of John's writings, and even in in the latter part of uh, I believe it's in Philemon, you see. That Paul, some of the words he used there, you can tell that he had read and studied the revelations mm -hmm. from Jesus to John. And it, it was evident in his writings that he had read it and studied it. Now, if it's so important for him and the brethren then to read and study the scriptures, how much more important yes. is it for us? Amen. You know, whenever Satan come against Jesus, you know, Jesus, what Satan was trying to do there when he told him that. He would cast it if he would throw himself down, or if he would bow. He said, "If you bow down to me, I'll give you all the keys on the world." Jesus came to die for the world. Yeah. That's, what, that's what he died yeah. for, right. so that we could be saved. We yeah. could be redeemed yeah. to him. Amen. But Satan saw it easy. He's trying to give him an easy way out. I'll give you, if you bow down to me, you won't have to die, and I'll still give you all the kingdoms of the world. They'll still worship you, but you won't have to die. And Jesus used the scriptures against him. Jesus knew the scripture. It is written. I said, not live by no He said, Thou shalt not worship and have no other God before me. And if he if it's he's so important to use the scriptures to defy Satan, how much more of us? Amen. Amen. You know, Amen. Uh, this week, whenever we was working, we had it was raining. You know, I was meditating on the Word of God. And I have been reading and studying. And you know, time to time, you, you'll read something in the Bible. You don't really understand how it might be helpful to you. But you read stories and different things that happen in the Old Testament. Yes. And you know, the reason it's there is so you can use it for information. <coughs> That's right. Yes. We know the Bible is in there. It, it is... It follows through from front to back. Amen. Regardless of what some doctrine, some people teach that people that that uh, they went in and they inserted different things of their own free will, but that's not that's not uh, that's true. It's not true. It's just people trying to discredit the Bible. Amen. Right? Amen. Now I'm gonna tell you, uh, when Satan comes against you, what better is it to use the Bible? That's right. Amen. You know, we was praying there at the Lord that it was.
to stop raining so we could work. And I was praying, I was meditating, and I said, Lord, the Bible says you hear our prayer. Amen. And you know, Satan, he's right there. He's saying, you know, you ain't nothing special. God ain't going to hear your prayer. Well, I know I'm not anything special. That's what I told him. I'm not anything special. Amen. But the Bible does not lie. Amen. And I can stand on the Word of God. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. And you know that anytime, anytime, Whenever you go to God in prayer, you can stand on the Word of God. Amen. That's what it's there. Yeah, it's this morning, Brother Bourbon needed prayer in, in the prayer room, had a migraine. And I said, you know, Jesus said, uh, you ask anything in my name, and I will do it. He did not say, if you have the gift of miracles, you ask in my name, and I'll do it. He didn't say, if you had the gift of faith, you ask in my name, I'll do it. He didn't say that. If you have the gift of healings, he didn't say that. Now, I'm not saying those aren't good things. They are good. They're very good. I'm going to tell you, we don't need to get hung up on that. Yeah. Amen. I look back at my life and I see in my prayer life that I have got hung up on that. And I think that more so Christians, a lot of Christians get hung up on Well, I don't have the gift. I don't have this. I don't have that. Jesus didn't say we had to have those things. Amen. Jesus said, ask. Believe. Amen. Amen. If you believe, you shall have it. Yes. Amen. And how do we believe? We got to study the scriptures. Yes. Right. We got to study the word of God to show that you know what else it says? It says God is no respecter of the Amen. Amen. Right. The same thing he did for Elijah. Yeah. The same thing he did for Paul and Peter. Yes. James and John, all them. The same thing he does for them. Same thing he does for Brother Perman, he's gonna do for me. Amen. Amen. Brother Perman, he's gonna do for Brother Junior. Amen. Brother Ed right. gonna do for Brother Steve. Amen. He's, he's no respecter of the Lord. The more I meditate on that and think about it, it's, it's really helped me a lot yeah. to see that my prayer, my prayer reaches God's throne. Amen. It doesn't matter that I, I don't have a gift. I don't have to have a gift. You don't have to have a That's gift. That's right. The only gift yeah. you got to have is belief. Amen. And that here is imparted to each one of us whenever we receive salvation. Amen. Amen. Whenever we come and give our heart to God, we believe that He saves us. Amen. And you stand on that belief, that faith, that is faith. That belief right there is called faith. Amen. You can call it anything you want to, but it's believing in God is called faith. Amen. And some people say, I just don't know if I have the faith. But you do have the faith. I remember I related this before. I heard Brother Jesse tell somebody one time who was getting ready to pray for him. Brother Jesse said, the fact that you got up and walked down here is that you have faith. Right. Hey, right. If you did not believe God would heal you, you wouldn't have wasted your time. Amen. That's right. That's right. Now you believe, you think about that. That is faith. Hey, and you know, we try to build it up to be something big and huge. It's not. That's yeah. right. Faith is believing in God. Hey, and amen. believing that He will do what He said. You, know, you, read, you read here in the Word and the Scriptures, uh, that's what Paul did. He said, I am persuaded right. that He is able Paul, Paul didn't say that he had a guilt right. of faith. And because of my guilt of faith, I know that he is able. He didn't say that. He said, I am persuaded that he is able. Amen. And we have to be persuaded. Amen. And how do we persuade? How are we persuaded? we got to read the Scriptures. Yeah. Right. Yeah. we got to study the Scriptures and show that they will not, they don't confound anybody. Right. They enlighten us. Amen. I, I'm going to tell you, I was enlightened whenever I realized that the Bible is, is not lie. The Bible is not lie. God cannot lie. Amen. He, and, and He is no respecter of persons at all. What He will do for one, He will do for the other. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, we got to stand on that. That's we right. got to believe that. That's right. I, I'm not saying it's not good to see the gifts working. It is good. But you know, we the, a lot of times you read in history, you read in the Bible, the gifts were prevalent whenever the church was persecuted most. Right. Or whenever there was a great truth proclaimed through the ages. Whenever a great truth came out, it was followed by signs and miracles. Right. That's right. Now that's something extraordinary that happens. Amen. But you can see extraordinary things happen in your life. Yes. But whenever you pray, Amen. Amen. And I know Satan, his favorite thing is his his favorite thing is to oppose you and cause doubt. Amen. But the scriptures confirm everything. Amen. They confirm what we have been teached, Amen. what we have been taught, and what we teach. That's right. They confirm it all. Yeah. Right. If you uh, me and Sister Jesse and Sister Joey, we was talking, we, we sat around and Donald. 
And we had some good discussions each night, talking about the Bible, talking about what we heard that day, and uh, just learning from it. And you know, one thing was said is the Scriptures, no, no matter how clear it may seem sometimes, if they, if they don't back up another Scripture, if it seems there's a fault there, if it seems something just don't jive, if they don't go together, if it makes one seem false and the other one true, then there's something not right. That's right. Yeah. And we're reading it wrong. And we're not, we're not understanding the setting of one or the other Scripture. Right. Uh, yeah. Because the Bible does not contradict itself. That's right. It yeah. will not contradict itself. Yeah. Right. You, you, yeah. you can look in James and read something in James, and if it looks like it contradicts Genesis, then you better read it again. That's right. Because it will not contradict Amen. itself. Amen. And how do we know this? That's because we study it. And we read it. And we, the Spirit of God witnesses to us. Amen. But how can you understand it if you don't read it? That's right. Amen. How can you understand it? How can you understand, how can the Word of God impart knowledge to you if you don't read it? Right? Amen. If you don't carry it with you, you know? I see people carrying cell phones at church more than they carry Bibles at church. Yes. And I'm going to tell you, it bothers me. It does bother me. I see people playing on their cell phones in church instead of reading the Bible. Yes. And it bothers me. Yeah. I'm going to tell you it bothers me. I sit there and I keep my Bible open. Yes, sir. Yes. And I keep it open and I follow along. I That's want right. to prove what he is That's speaking right. to me is the truth. Yeah. Amen. As, as I'm not saying that Brother Junior is not right or Brother Perth or Brother Brad or Brother Alvin or Brother Greg. I'm not, I'm not saying that they're wrong. But the Bible tells me to study. Right? Yes. So, yes. I, and I have to be persuaded in myself that what He is telling me is right. right. I, I, cannot, I cannot stand before God and say, Brother Junior said. That's or, right. And our Brother Perkins said, or our Brother Brad told me. Um, and that's why I did it. You can't do that. That's right. Well, well, you're going to have to know for yourself. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what. What Paul said here is true. Whenever a minister gets up, you need to follow what he's saying. That's right. Because Satan is divisive. Yes, sir. And he will do it. He will trip. I've heard him trip ministers up in the pulpit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you're not following along, that might cause some trouble. And I've heard ministers make a correction there. And they, they, you know, they say you're right. And they say it the right way. But I'm going to tell you, Satan will use any little thing to destroy a people. He will use anything to destroy confidence in one another. That is his job. That is his, that's what he's here for. Is to destroy you and destroy me. That's right. And we see that. How do we know that? How do we know that? Because the Bible confirms it. You have to study the Bible to see that. You know, if, if you didn't study the Bible, you wouldn't realize that that the lake of fire was created for Satan and his imps. It's not created for me and you. No. It's created for Satan and his imps. But how do we, we know this? It's just not divinely imparted to us. We have to study the Word to see that. We have to study the Word to show, to prove, and to understand that we have great rewards. When we leave this life, if we're true to God, we're true to Christ, true to our salvation, that we have a great reward. That's not just we don't just wake up one day and say, I understand now if I if I'm a, if I live okay, I'm gonna go to heaven. That's not what it says. Right. The Bible says that if you endure, he who endures to the end shall be saved. Amen. And that, that tells me that word endure means that it's a struggle. Amen. It's a struggle. Endure. You see they have these they have these races they call endurance races. And I'm gonna tell you, they push a person to the limit. Mm -hmm. They do a cross country run, they swim, and then they ride a bicycle for so many miles. It's an endurance. Now, one that starts, just because he starts, don't mean he's a winner. Right. He's got to cross the finish line. Amen. 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 And that's the same thing it is with our salvation. We have to cross the finish line. He that endures to the end shall be saved, but we can't ever expect to cross the finish line if we don't study. That's, that's right. right. If we don't know the word. Because Satan will try to trip you up. And you know, there's so many things that Satan, he, if you don't read it just right, he'll twist the Scripture. And I'm saying, and he'll put you on the wrong track. Uh, you know, in many Bibles, they have references. They have a, a reference to another Scripture. 
And we was talking about that. A lot of times that's good, but sometimes they throw you on the wrong track. That's right. That's right. Completely. Amen. And if you don't, if you're not studied up and you don't haven't read the Bible to know that that scripture don't fit there, then you'll be tripped up. Right. <clears throat> but the Spirit of God will lead us in truth. I'm going to tell you. Amen. Whenever you study the Bible, uh, it's good to ask God to direct you. Amen. If you don't understand what you're reading, you need to say, Lord, yes. you need to pray before you read. Lord, yes. show me. Because I'm never going to be led. Amen. We must study the Scriptures. Amen. Yeah. Whenever, you know, you in conversation day to day with people, they are talking about what they know, what they've studied, and that's sin. That is a life of sin. That is what Satan puts before me today. That is what they study. That's what they know. That's what they understand. That's right. And whenever we live, our conversation, it says, let our conversation be holy. That's right. <clears throat> That's what it, what it becomes of Christians. And I'm going to tell you, that what that conversation is, is the way you live each day. Right. Right. Whenever you talk to someone, they know if you're Amen. different or not. Amen. Amen. They know if something's different about you. That's right. That fellow we was talking about, Christopher Kerr for a Richard, the first time we met, it was just something where it clicked with. And we started singing old hymns, and it, and he it got we we wanted to go over and visit with him at the music store, and he was glad we came. Whenever we wasn't busy, we'd stop by there and sit and play and sing, and we enjoyed it. Why? That's because we had a spirit that loved to be around, and we enjoyed that fellowship. Mm -hmm. And we we understand from reading the Bible that there are many out there that. You can have fellowship with. They might not understand what you understand, but if they live in all they know, yes. that's right. and we're to call them a brother, yeah. we're to admonish them as a brother or sister. <clears throat> now, how would you know to do that if you didn't read it in the scriptures? Yes. I know that the Spirit of God tells us something there, but you know, Satan will build a roadblock up. Yes. You know that Satan. I mean, and he has in times past. He's thrown roadblocks up in, in the church of God. They say, because they say, well, he don't believe exactly what we believe. So he burst that away from them. And that's not right. Amen. That's not what the Bible says. That's not. That's not. That's not the doctrine of the Church of that's God. That's right. The Church of God is is that you uh, in fellowship until you come to the faith. How, how's that scripture? The unity. unity of the Spirit. Yes. Until you come to unity of the faith. Amen. And I tell you, and and there's a time whenever if they you talk to ones and they won't see it, the Spirit cut. Spirit will let you know. That's right. And the Spirit Amen. will let you know. I've had it happen to me, and I'm sure you have too. But until that happens, we need to give them the benefit of the Amen. doubt. Amen. And, and we would not know that if we didn't study. We would not know. We wouldn't understand that. We wouldn't understand what's going on when we talk to people. We feel them draw there unless we study the Scriptures. That's how important it is to study the Scriptures. Amen. Amen. Study to show yourself approved. That's in, in uh, 2 Timothy, I believe. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, yes. rightly dividing yes. the word of truth. Yes. Rightly dividing. How can you rightly divide if you don't study? If the Spirit don't witness to you. That's right. You may, I'm going to tell you. It, it is something that's needful in our day. That's right. You know, I was thinking about that a cell phone. You, somebody gets a cell phone, they study a cell phone. Mm -hmm. They got to know how it works. They got to know how to get on the internet. You gotta know how to send text messages, take pictures, store your data, call somebody. They gotta know everything. They, they know everything, the in and outs about that phone when they get it. That's right. But I tell you what, they walk off and leave your Bible on the dresser. That's right. They leave the Bible on the dresser and bring the phone with them. When this Bible has got more knowledge in it than that phone ever had. Amen. Amen. Right. No, regardless of how sophisticated technology is. It can never give you the words of life. It can never save your soul. It can never point you to heaven. That's right. It can never teach you brotherly love. It can never show you that you need to love one another. You need to love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. It, it will not. It will not. That phone will not do it. That phone won't do anything that you don't tell it to do. It can't call somebody. It can't call somebody. It can't reach out and touch somebody's heart. That's right. Bible can. The Bible, right. can teach you. Yes. the Bible can teach you how to apply those things in your life. The Bible can teach you that the Bible tells us that if you pray, believe it, yeah, God will answer. 
And you know, if you have a burden and you pray, then God can reach into other states and other places and do things that we can't even understand. That's right. You know, in the story of Peter in the prison, you know, they, the saints come together and they was praying. Sure. And uh, I often think about that. You know, they was praying. They had a prayer meeting. Peter is going to be, I don't know if he's going to be executed or what was going to happen. He was going to come before the magistrates the next day. And they was praying and they got a hold of God. Yeah. It touched them. And because of that, he was able to work in Peter's behalf. I'm sure Peter was praying too. But I believe that example is given to us to see that the church as a body needs to come together and to pray. Amen. And, to, and to do these things. Now you see that, that he was in the prison house. And I, I use this illustration at a men's prayer breakfast. The prison house is representative of sin. You know that? The chains... That is habits and things that Satan has that binds us down. He, we cannot, of our free accord, take the bands off of us. That's right. We cannot, of our free accord, get up and walk out. Now, I'm going to tell you, the angel come to him and said, the light shone about him. And the angel of the Lord spoke to him and said, get up, put your clothes on. And then immediately, the bands fell off of him. Mm -hmm. And he let him pass out to the gate. Now, he's, he's coming out of prison. Now he's coming out of that prison house of sin and the gates open of their own accord. That's right. I mean, we cannot free ourselves from the bondage of sin. That's right. You know, in our family, our loved ones came. No. They can't do it. We have to pray for them. Yes. And he went to the house there and they just couldn't hardly believe it. But you know, it, the, the brother had taught them not to forsake assembling themselves together. That's right. And they really latched a hold of that. You know that? They saw the need for prayer. They Amen. saw the relevance of it. And I'm, really, I'm persuaded that it's because they read the Scriptures and studied the Scriptures and seen that whenever different ones prayed, the prophets prayed through the ages, that God moved. Amen. Otherwise, they wouldn't have come together for prayer if they didn't know the power of it. They had to know the power of it. Sure. And they had, how did they know? They had to study it. Amen. It's not, it don't just come to you all of a sudden. It don't just come to you. That's why it's so important that we study Whenever Satan comes against us, we got to be able to hand him the Word of God and say, yeah. Satan, this is what the Bible says. That's right. Yeah. And I know yeah. you are. That's yeah. right. So I encourage you tonight, if you feel like that your prayer is not getting past the ceiling, you need to rebuke Satan. That's yeah. right. It's just yeah. that simple. Yeah. And I'll tell you, it really is. I, I, I think about it, you hear people say, I just feel like my prayers are hindered. Well, I'm going to tell you, Satan's hindered. Sure. Sure. That's right. and, and he might false accuse you and tell you you've done something wrong. If, you can, if he can get you to doubt, or if he can get you to think that you've done something wrong, or you're not right, or God's not going to hear your prayer, then your prayer will not be answered. Amen. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, if you go against him with the Word of God, you yes. stand on the promises of the Bible, your prayer be answered. Amen. Amen. And I'll tell you, it's, it's what, like we said the other day in, in, uh, in Sunday school, I think it was Brother Shaw said, God has three answers to prayer. It's yes, no, and wait. That's what the answers are. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And, I'm, and there's a reason. And I'm going to tell you what, we got to believe that. Amen. Amen. And wherever you pray, you pray for an answer. Right. Amen. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, it is God's will to answer your prayer. Amen. Amen. It is God's will. It is God's will that you be satisfied in this life. It is God's will that you exemplify Christ. Amen. It is God's will that we tell others. And it is God's will that we have power and proof to back up our life. That's right. God bless you to see Amen. Amen.